As designers, you are at the center of these network technology choices. With your holistic view of the context and the problem to address, you know the key factors influencing the decision. With the first lecture, we have the, the key questions to surface our list of network requirements. We will now land on network terminologies to connect requirements with network industry standards. We will also discuss the interoperability challenge and ways to deal with it. Throughout, we will refer to the names of some technologies as example. Do not bother too much with their name. The terminology is the most important. When exploring the different internet architectures, we saw that we could connect to a local IP network at home or on campus. Still, we can also connect to the IP network directly via the cellular connection, the so-called 4G. Here, we have two IP wireless networks, but with a significant difference, the covered area. So let's briefly scan through different network areas, starting small with what we call body area network or BAN. These networks are designed for connecting devices on the human body. They are specially used for connected clothes like ant technology, personal area network or PAN reach out further. Such network focus on, on the person's workspace. A connected speaker via Bluetooth would be a, a good example. On the internet connected wheelchair in the demo, Bluetooth also connects the sensors from the wheel to, to the frame of the wheelchair. Then local area network or, or LAN is the next step covering a building. In this range, we also refer to home area network, HAN, or even wireless LAN for WLAN, which emphasize on the wireless property of the network as opposed as wired. The metropolitan area network or MAN connects LANs in urban areas at the scale of a large city. Wide area network or one are designed to bridge the gap between MANs connecting urban area. Also in the wide areas, the LP1 or low power are specially designed for the Internet of Things, enabling resource constraints devices to send small amount of data over very long distances. The Internet protocol is mainly relying on the star topology. A network topology is how devices of a network connect or relate to one another. For the star, all local network devices interact with a router that routes the traffic to its destination. Another device on the local network or the next router on the internet. It is a typical topology for a home internet enabled environment. However, there are other network topologies. You might encounter peer-to-peer, -peer, bus or mesh topologies for connected products. With peer-to-peer, Two devices communicate via a direct link. On a bus, all devices connect to a single wire, the bus. A device sends a message on the bus and all other devices receive it one after the other. However, only the targeted device read the message. Example how the, the bus can in cars or the C bus in building automation. And with mesh, devices are connected to several devices on the network, so called the nodes. They can receive and transmit messages from and to the, these devices. Only the targeted device reads the message, otherwise, the message is sent to the following devices. 
in the IoT context. It is often used to connect low power devices across wide areas, such as an agriculture fields, for instance. Sensors can send a message to their neighbor sensors, which will transmit the information further until reaching the destination. If all devices are connected to all devices, it is a fully connected network. How do we measure the performance of a network? There are several metrics. Bandwidth is the maximum amount of data a network can transfer in one second. It is a theoretical value. Then throughput measures the network's actual data transmission rate, which can vary widely through the different areas of your network. We already talked about latency. This is the delay between a device requesting data and when that data is finished being delivered. Network availability, also known as uptime, measures whether or not the network is currently operational. You can never guarantee 100% availability, but you want to be aware of any downtime on your network that you weren't expecting. With all requirements surfaced in the previous video and the terminology covered so far, this represents an open field for any different standards, always advantages and constraints. Some of these standards are open, others are closed, with exclusive use or with royalties. This creates the challenge of interoperability, the possibility to communicate from one device to another across different industry standards. There are three ways to address these challenges. First, via the cloud. This is the service-to-service -service internet architecture that we discussed in the previous module. In this case, APIs are used to bridge the gap. Locally, another solution is the multi-protocol gateway. A gateway translates from one protocol to another. So far, we have mentioned the translation into the Internet protocol. Some gateway can translate into several protocols, bridging the gap locally. Finally, some network technology can be bridged at the transport layer, if you remember the four Internet layers we saw in the previous module. That's it for networks. We highlighted how to develop a list of network requirements in the context of Internet of Things. We introduced some networking technologies and underlined the needs for interoperable solutions to bridge the many network industry standards. Thank you.